you know, this is a really interesting city in that it's very much a laboratory for possible futures for America. So it's a place where, you know, tremendous influx of people, complete redefinition of the city. And in that sort of messiness, I think, is, is where a lot of experimentation can take place um, and should take place. And, and I think, you know, thinking of the magazine in particular, our role is really this kind of dialogue conveyor. We're this conveyor belt in and out of Atlanta. Um, and that's really, really important. I think on the one hand, um, what we do is import uh, the dialogue that's going on elsewhere. And, and make it present here for people to engage or not. You know, it's not about dictating you should read this or you should think about this, but just at least opening the door and saying, you know, your peers in Berlin and your peers in New York and your peers here and there, this is what's, you know, reading, that, what they're reading, what's um, influencing the work. So let's talk about it here as well so that we, from our Atlanta perspective, can speak back. You know, it's not about accepting, it's not about, you know, being um, subservient to that theory or those ideas, but it's about fully participating and throwing the ideas back. And I think that that's where we're, we're not there yet. So, you know, this is a kind of, I think to be part of the international art world, you have to produce, you have to be right. generative. And that means, um, you know, acknowledging that we have a very unique voice, taking responsibility for it, generating it and pushing it back and engaging fearlessly with this big, global dialogue and I think that that's exciting I mean I don't know any artist who starts being an artist saying I want to be a local artist no you right. want to be you know you have to have great reach well that requires um, a certain type of engagement and uh, an engagement in the dialogue is part of that and, and that's what we're here to kind of hopefully convey provide challenge well you know we were the magazine was launched here um, its history is one of the reasons I came to the magazine. It was very appealing to me. Um, I come from an artist-run background um, in Canada, which is very, very different than here. So looking at art papers as, you know, the, the newsletter of the Art Workers Coalition is kind of leftist, artist-centered um, publication was very, very appealing to me. And, and um, I could really see how it was crucial to take that that legacy and bring it forward to the future. What does it mean to be artist-centered, dialogue-centered, sort of a little bit leftist um, in this big world? Uh, so, I mean, I wouldn't have come here were it not for that history. So having said that, I think, as I mentioned before, it's, Atlanta is a really interesting place to work from. Uh, and so far it is, as it is very much of a laboratory. So the things that we're theorizing with art were also living, right, you know, on my way here to take a coffee. So analyzing all of those, and what I mean by that is that the power structure is not set here yet. The terms have not been yet dictated. There's room for people, if they have the energy and the intelligence, to claim a space, make things happen. New York may have a lot more money, a lot more clout, but it's a huge dinosaur. Um, you know, things are not going to change. The power structure is in place, and it doesn't matter how much energy and money you throw at it, it's so big that you can't displace it. That's not interesting to me. You right. know, I don't want to just follow. Um, you know, I think that an art magazine should ha you know, have a leadership role. So our role here is, is to kind of think about um, you know, what's going on in the present in the city and, and kind of use that as a filter to look at bigger global relationship. The other way to put it is that, you know, there's basically two texts of globalization, two narratives that we know. One is the narrative of financial centers. So how New York and London, you know, exert this just-in-time movement of goods and people and products around the globe. The other story that we know is the story of exploitation. But the whole middle is completely under-theorized. And that's actually where most people on the planet live, and that's the space that we occupy here. So I think being in a secondary city in a major country, so being in Atlanta, the secondary city in, in the America, that's a major country, is a great position to think about that middle space. Um, and it's a, play, it's a place from which we can link with uh, other middle cities, Istanbul, you know, Berlin, right. and so on, and kind of think, okay, what is this middle reality of globalization right now in the 21st century? What is the role of nonprofit organization at that point? Um, 
you know, what does contemporary art look like when it's not solely market dictated? And being in New York, you couldn't necessarily do that. The market is so omnipresent that it shades everything. Even if you're, you know, really careful, right. it's just, you know, pervades everything. And the same with London. Here, you can understand it as one valid, important component, but just one component. And there's many more. And um, so, yeah. So that's, that's why I think it's crucial to be in a place like Atlanta. And I also think that's why some of the most interesting other magazines that I read are... Uh, you know, coming from Amsterdam, or you know, they're mm -hmm. not coming from London or Paris, or so I think s sidestepping the center um, is a great place to think and, and to produce other kinds of knowledge. I mean, I mean, the challenge with Atlanta also is that it's so easy to be overexposed, and it's so easy to believe that this is success. So I think, and that's a challenge not just with Atlanta, but, but with any sort of second-tier city. It's easy to be a, be a big fish in a small pond, and, and I think um, I, I'm always telling artists stretch, expand, you know, reach out because you can be satisfied rather easily um, and lose sight of the much bigger, much more engaging dialogue elsewhere. So, um, so for me, the the question would be more um, you know how do local artists stretch out we're bringing stuff in but how do we allow right. them to stretch out and, and you know in the next issue of, of art papers you'll see we have a review of Fahamu Peku's show in Paris um, we have a, rev a review of Jihan Moon's show in, in Nashville so you know we try to not only um, cover the local art scene in a, in a sort of basic reactionary way but to be very proactive when people do get out to make sure that we insert them in this dialogue in some other way. Again, quietly, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, it's always about kind of, you know, highlighting the things that are just emerging internationally, bringing them back to something that's relevant here right now. And we need to get to the next level, which is pushing back our views onto the world to be full participants. <laughs>